Breaking news and update on the Israel-Hamas conflict. And a big opening weekend for Taylor Swift's Eras Tour movie. Plus an interview with the all-female and non-binary cast of the Emerson Channel's first live-to-tape Dungeons & Dragons show. All that and much more this morning, Tuesday, October 17th on Good Morning Emerson. Good morning, Emerson. I'm Drew Mitchell. And I'm Katie Delaney. Now, one of the big things everybody's talking about this weekend oh, is it's the everywhere. Eras Tour movie. Have you gotten around to seeing it yet? No, Katie, but it is everywhere. I've been seeing the fans running around in circles at the front of the theaters, and <laughs> it looks amazing. They're everywhere. People are dressing up, going all out. I haven't seen it yet, but what an exciting thing to be able to see this awesome tour, but from the theaters and for a lot cheaper than a 100 $1,000 ticket. It's insane. Yes. No, I know. I, I, we got to get there, obviously. We'll make it. Yeah. Well, with today's breaking news, uh, WBN correspondent Colette is reporting to us live in the JPC. How are you today, Colette? Thanks, guys. I'm doing pretty well. Um, to Welcome to the WBN News Update. I'm Colette Latour here with today's top stories. Tensions continue to rise in the Middle East as the Israel-Hamas war enters its 10th day. Civilians in the Gaza Strip have lost access to power and water. Israel began conducting airstrikes on the 25-mile strip following the surprise Hamas attack last week. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, just over 2,800 civilians in the Gaza Strip have been killed. More than 1,400 Israelis have been killed by Hamas. President Biden announced yesterday he will travel to Israel on Wednesday. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu invited Biden to the country this weekend. Biden hopes to express America's support for Israel during this trip. He wants to help the country fight Hamas while also focusing on the humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. Biden will begin his trip in Tel Aviv. He will then travel to Jordan to meet with Egyptian leaders and the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Congressman Jim Jordan continues his campaign for the Speaker of the House. The Ohio Republican has recently gained more support due to endorsements from conservative allies. Representative Steve Scalise received more votes than Jordan in a race for the nomination last week. However, Scalise withdrew his bid for the Speakership the next day. The House is expected to hold a floor vote at noon today. All this comes after previous Speaker Kevin McCarthy was ousted from the position in a historic 216 to 210 vote. Long live the Eras Tour, the film version of Taylor Swift's historic concert hit theaters this weekend. The film immediately became a box office success. According to AMC Theaters, the Eras Tour movie made $96 million in its opening weekend. It was the biggest domestic opening ever for a concert film. Swift kicked off her tour in the U.S. this summer. According to the Washington Post, the first leg of the tour added $5.7 billion to the U.S. economy. That's all for today's WBN News Update. Hey guys, what do you think of the Eras Tour movie? I mean, come on, Katie, what an amazing experience. Like, this is like no other I've ever seen before. And I, I wouldn't say I'm a Swifty, but, you know, when Drew looks at me, I, I fake a smile so he can't see. <laughs> yeah, we love you and your Taylor Swift references. Yes. So. Oh, of course. Yeah. Obviously. Sounds like a great time. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks so much, Colette. Definitely. And in some Boston buzz, the infamous Boston cop slide video that gained thousands of views this summer is back in all its comedic glory after appearing in a recent episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. The show finally returned to air following the five-month WGA strike with its first episode featuring a recap of major pop culture moments that took place during the show's hiatus. Oliver introduced the video as the single best movie of the summer with the clip showcasing the unforgettable moment when a Boston police officer barked on a bumpy ride down the slide at City Hall Plaza, leading to a pretty rough tumble to the ground. He also mentioned the site became a popular destination on Google Maps, attracting a surge of thrill seekers, mostly adults, to experience the chaotic slide for themselves. And in more local news, Harvard student Ben Chang crossed a major goal off of his bucket list this weekend. He crossed the Charles River in a giant pumpkin. Chang secured a 1,500-pound pumpkin from a farm in New Hampshire for his voyage and got a fork to transport it after posting a request for one on Reddit. Chang and his friends wheeled the pumpkin to the river along Memorial Drive on Saturday morning and carved out a place for him to sit inside. The challenge helped raise money for Harvard's student-led bioengineering lab, earning them hundreds of dollars in donations. And speaking of these fall antics, our weather correspondent Caroline Reese is live on Boylston Street with a fall weather update. Caroline?
All right, good morning, you guys. We are definitely feeling that fall feel outside getting out the door this morning. Very chilly start to the day. Highs almost nearing 60 degrees, but we're going to stay at 59 for the day. One of those jacket in the morning, t-shirt in the afternoon kind of days. Tomorrow into Thursday, though, a lot more sun. We are going to stay in the 60 degree temps, which is going to feel amazing. You're going to feel the sun, see the sun. Perfect days to get outside and enjoy that October weather while we still have it and can see it. I can't say the same about the weekend, though. Friday into the weekend, a lot more rain, expected showers and thunderstorms. Um, Saturday, a really wet day, a soggy day. And then Sunday, a lot of the remnants of Saturday we're going to see. But between the two, Saturday is your washout day. But we have you covered here on Good Morning Emerson for your weekly forecast. Drew and Katie, back to you at the desk. Thanks so much, Caroline. This week, the weather is really so great. It's kind of one of the only weeks where you get a consistent, nice, crisp, 50-something degree weather. Yeah, one could, so Taylor fun. Swift could say it's cardigan weather, maybe. A little that. sweater sweater weather moment. Oh my it gosh. It is, and too bad the weekend's not gonna be as good. Yeah, we'll get our rain jackets out then, but bask in this glory we'll right now, we can. of course. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Okay, Slay, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Come on, you light shot the entire thing, and in three, two, one, take it. Tell them you. Welcome back to Emerson College. Emerson trails. Tell them you. Get a shot of the players coming across the court. Ten seconds left. Emerson trails by one point. As Camera the two close on the first two days. Thanks, Joe. With ten seconds left. I want to close the follow them over. Emerson Trail WPI 10 points. 10 seconds left. Emerson Trail by one point as the team finishes their time. Camera one close up on number 33. Thanks, Joe. 10 seconds left. Emerson is going to Follow the ball. Follow the ball. Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. I'm Katie Delaney. And I'm Drew Mitchell. Wait a Oh, was that? Reverse it. <laughs> reverse. Was that I identity fraud, maybe? I think it might have just been. I think it was. And identity fraud is rampant everywhere right now, even in Congress. Mm -hmm. Now, with more on that, some news and updates from politics this weekend, our politics correspondent, Meg Richards, has the latest. Meg? Thanks, Katie. An update on Israel. Leaders of the Congressional Progressive Caucus are calling on President Joe Biden before the ensuing Israel-Hamas war. Dozens of congressional Democrats are pleading with the president to push Israel to follow international law as they prepare to retaliate against Hamas for the deadly attack in the Gaza Strip. Israel has ordered more than one million Palestinians to move south from the northern Gaza Strip. Democrats say this is not possible, with House members saying it is a violation of international humanitarian law. And New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez charged with being an unregistered agent of Egypt. Official documents state that the senator was in violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act for his involvement with Egypt while holding a high power position that influences international relations. This charge comes after accusations that he and his wife accepted bribes in the form of cash, gold, and cars from three New Jersey businessmen benefiting from Menendez's role in foreign affairs. Senator John Fetterman of Pennsylvania and other members of Congress are calling for Menendez to resign. And more charges. New York Representative George Santos facing 10 new fraud-related charges. The congressman is accused of identity fraud and allegedly spending thousands of donation dollars on himself. This comes five months after Santos was charged with 13 counts of financial crimes, including defrauding donors and falsely claiming unemployment benefits. Santos refused to comment on the charges and has no plans to resign. That's all I have for politics today. Back to you at the desk. Thanks so much, Meg. Katie, don't we love friendship? We do. <laughs> Here on Good Morning Emerson, we're all good friends. Yes. Here. Oh my gosh. And friendships make the world go round. Actually, you know, it's so sure. funny. This semester, I'm in a class called On Friendship. There you go. Um, so you're so, the expert. So obviously, I'm the expert on all friends everywhere. And I think, uh, 
think it's important to have those friends up there that uh, we trust and love. Yes. <laughs> but you know, with more on pop culture updates, we actually have our entertainment correspondent, Ella Schaefer, who has the latest. Ella? Thanks, Drew. It's been a long time coming for Taylor Swift. With the pop star's Eras Tour movie premiering in Los Angeles on Wednesday, Swift invited both fans and friends to join her on the carpet, posing for pictures throughout the night. Other celebrities were also in attendance, including Beyonce, who has her own concert film coming out on December 1st. In more Taylor news, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey made surprise appearances on Saturday Night Live, which returned this past weekend. The Kansas City Chiefs' tight end and the pop star had separate cameos on the late night comedy, with Kelsey appearing at the end of an NFL sketch and Swift introducing musical guest Ice Spice for her second performance. The pair ate at Nobu in New York City for a dinner date prior to the show. And Jada Pinkett Smith says that Tupac Shakur was her soulmate. In an interview, Pinkett Smith discussed the strong connection she had with the late rapper, who was killed by a gunman in 1996. See, she expressed that any suspected chemistry between them was not romantic and that they were just very close friends, saying, quote, it's that friendship love chemistry. Pinkett Smith reveals more about her relationship with Shakur in her memoir, Worthy, which comes out today. That's all the entertainment news I have for you today. Back to you at the desk. Thanks so much, Ella. That memoir is sure to have a lot in it. Now we're going to go to a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. When I arrive at my destination, I am gonna kill Bill. Oh, what? Oh, okay, cut cutting, cutting. Oh, sorry, can we get some of these lights? Where in God's name is the gaffer stage? Hi, I'm Nate. And I'm Casey, and we're the National Broadcasting Society. Come out to some of our weekly workshops, or work on some of our sets. Explore the bigger picture with NBS. We'll see you there. All right, let's get another take. Camera, sound. So yeah, it's like Emerson's very own late night talk show. We've got games like Jimmy Fallon, and we're hot like Jimmy Kimmel, and we've got guests. I'm going to talk to them. You can talk too, I guess. There's a live studio audience, and they're just going to laugh at everything we say, and it's going to be awesome. It's just this never-ending cycle of positivity and community and late night content. I'm going to wear a suit. You should probably wear one too. What do you think? I think you should drink up, because it's closing time. Welcome back to Good Morning Emerson. Now, Drew, you know someone at Emerson who's always winning, staying winning? Emerson athletes! They really are. Student athletes at this school are truly amazing because They'll go from on the court, on the field, to in the studio, on set, on a production. It's, it's the amazing. Stage. And they're always they're giving everywhere. their 100%. That's mm -hmm. true. Now, yeah. with more sports news, including some Emerson updates, our sports correspondent, Noah, has the latest. Noah? Yeah, thanks, Katie. Some heavyweight boxing news. YouTuber Logan Paul faced off against former jiu-jitsu champion Dylan Dennis in Manchester on Saturday. Paul reigned victorious, dominating each round of the fight, but won by default when Dennis was disqualified for attempting to put Paul in a headlock. Mayhem arose in the ring, with security being forced to hold him back. This comes as Dennis is potentially facing lawsuits for harassing Paul's fiance, Nina Ogdahl, online. And fellow YouTuber KSI battled Tommy Fury, pro boxer and younger brother of heavyweight champion Tyson Fury, where a much more respectful bout took place. However, the decision remained controversial, with Fury winning via a unanimous decision, despite commentators and fans alike believing that KSI was the rightful winner. KSI said that the match was a robbery. And in Emerson Athletics news, the women's soccer team defeated Springfield 2 to nothing, with the goals coming from seniors Brittany Rigetti and Gina Likoski, and assists from juniors Madeline Kaw and Katie Wojcik. 
the Lions dominated proceedings, tallying 10 more shots than Springfield and not allowing a single shot on goal. This marks starting goalkeeper Amara Schaub's fourth clean sheet of the season. Their next game is on Wednesday against Wellesley, where the purple and gold will be looking to extend their winning streak to five straight. And the women's volleyball team fell 3-1 to one to Coast Guard after splitting the first two sets. Coast Guard were able to grab two straight to close out the match, winning in four sets. Junior Amelia Combs led the team with 14 kills. However, the big news came from former Defensive Player of the Year, senior Caroline Davis, as she surpassed 1,000 career digs, an incredible achievement in Emerson Athletics history. The squad plays New Mac rival Smith College tonight to try and get back to winning ways. Emerson has a 7-3 all-time record versus Smith, and despite losing against them in their last matchup, have never lost back-to-back -back games against the Pioneers. That's all I have for sports today. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks so much, Noah, and good luck to all the teams out there. Yeah. Um, well, we're so excited to talk uh, to the cast of Emerson Channel's hit show, Point Hit Hall, the Hit Point Hall. Before we bring them out, let's take a look at what this show has done so far. And welcome to a starborn wedding. This is Hit Point Hall. My name is Magpie, and we are about to play some D&D. <coughs> Howdy! Hello, and welcome to season two of Hit Point Hall. So the Duke is working with, was working with, is working with your kind of movement. If not the wall. With those dogs. With those dogs. The dogs you can't kick. Dogs. Honestly, in my notes, <laughs> I, in my, in my notes I have written, they'll know it by the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you got that one. Yeah, that's all I have. I forgot to use the cup. God, that's that's use cup. cup. Oh my God, oh, this is so stressful. Well, look, Oda, you are doing the math in your head trying to figure out what to do here. Now you are Y plus punches. MX equals B. You are throwing punches, trying to knock him off his balance. He is glaring at you, furious, Ginny, but you are slicing through creatures, moving towards saving your wife. Gil, you're animating the entire Boston Common. <laughs> <laughs> you suit me looks at you and says, I am going to put you in the ground. I am not going to have this taken away from me. I have lost everything and I will not lose this. Well, either of you, I need I something. I had to oh. ask. I had thought I of oh. roasting thighs. He, he asked multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> good, Please. good. I need somebody inconspicuous that is so dumb that nobody will look at him twice. I might look a bit different. It's because my players physically beat me up often. <laughs> uh, they killed Ian Harper, or they stabbed Ian Harper, and then they said, took me out in the hallway and said, Aiden, give it come. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, traveler. Care to join me for a story? Amazing. And That's amazing. Yeah. That looks amazing. Uh, that. That looks so cool, amazing. and we're so excited to get a glimpse into the next season yeah. of Hit Point Hall. Oh, definitely. <laughs> now we're going to take a quick commercial break, but don't go anywhere. Jeez, that's real super. Had a nitwit like you get so tasteful. I can't believe Lance prefers Brad's commercial to mine. Let's see NBS's commercial.
Ugh. Having writer's block? Try NBS. All right, everyone, put those scripts away. We're going up with scene convention canceled in five. And action. It was you all along. No. I didn't. I didn't kill the boy. Oh, cut. Struggling with delivery? Try NBS. Hold, lighting, what's going on? Need to learn a new crew position? Try NBS. It was you all along! It wasn't me, okay? I didn't kill the boy. I promise. Look at the subtle promotions. Tasteful cuts. Oh my gosh. It even fades to black. Are you okay there, Zach? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? I'm Jamie Sanders, host of MTV Games, and welcome to my set! Where are the contestants? I lost the contestants. Where are the contest- um... Oh, hey there. I'm Jamie Sanders, host of MTV Games. What am I doing in a ball pit? Hello? Hello? What, what am I doing in a ball pit? I'm all alone. Please watch the show. Maggie, did you print up the script? No, uh, that was your job. Maggie, oh my god, I do it every no, week. No, no, I no, told but, you this but, is the one but we I didn't about want this. responsibility. Okay, um, I need to pick my legend. Oh my god, look, they got us slushies. Now get used to it. Come on, give me my mic. Mic me. Hi, I'm Christian Mudrick. And I'm Maggie Morlat. And you're watching Real Reactions. On the Emerson Channel. For host of EIV's The Dish, tune in every Friday for your chance to see what kind of bow tie I pulled out of my closet today. Welcome back. We're sitting with the cast of Hit Point Hall. Guys, how are we feeling this morning? Oh, I'm feeling so absolutely good. fantastic. Amazing. I know it's not ideal because it is so early in the morning, but we're so happy to have you guys here. Thanks oh. so much for coming out. Yeah. Happy to be happy here. To be here. Yeah. Oh, all right, can you guys um, introduce yourselves for the viewers at home? All right, hi, my name is Riley Miles. Uh, I'm a sophomore. I my pronouns are she, her, and I'm playing Lucinda Desdemona Day on Hip Point Hall. 
Hi, my name is Caitlin Farrell. I use she, they pronouns. I'm a senior VMA, and I play Tiva Karanar on Hit Point Hall. Hi, I'm Sarah. Um, I use they, them pronouns. I'm a senior theater design tech major, and I'm playing Prism Monsoon. Ooh. And hi, I'm Sabrina Samuelson. My pronouns are she, her, and I am your wonderful dungeon master for this season. Yes. Ooh. All right, Amazing. wonderful. Thanks so much. Yeah, well, okay, so I'm not even going to lie, and I don't know if people at home feel this way. I don't know too much about dun Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I actually only know of Dungeons and Dra Dragons through Stranger Things. So why don't you give the people at home a little brief rundown of what the game is, what it's about. Yeah. yeah, so I like to start off by saying Dungeons and Dragons is gambling plus improv, which everyone is like, those two things sound terrifying <laughs> to immediately people. But really it's about creating a story with your friends that has unpredictable elements in oh, it. Yeah. And that's so awesome and yeah. so fun. Yeah. Now, so you guys have made two great seasons of D&D &D, D &D gameplay with very different themes. Mm -hmm. um, so what's your setting? What's the theme for the upcoming campaign? Uh, our theme for this upcoming campaign is a beach mystery. It's set Ooh. in a completely original world created by me. Um, it's set in the city of Marin Cove. And Ooh. after their roommate and friend Dylan goes missing, uh, these wonderful roommates have to go and find her. Oh my goodness. That sounds so exciting. Yeah, so what, what, what was the thought process behind coming up with the theme? Like how, how does that work? Because I think that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so I grew up in uh, Southern California, mm. so I've lived on the beach my whole life. I know it doesn't look like it, considering I'm the color of freshly fallen snow, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I... <laughs> You know, I've lived on the beach my whole life. It's something I'm personally very interested in. And I really wanted to pitch a season that was like no other D&D shows that are currently on. The two main ones that people think of are Dimension 20 and Critical Role. And they haven't had a beach season yet. I wanted to do 1950s aesthetics. Oh. I wanted to have all these beautiful people around the beach, you know, yeah. just like very much a movie musical style. Oh, I love, love that. that. <laughs> and so you are doing something a little bit different with the cast this season. Um, yeah. Can you explain that? And feel free for anyone to take it. Of course, who wants it. to take it? I'll take it. Yeah. So this semester, um, our season of Hit Point Hall is a fully, you know, AFAB non-binary cast, mm -hmm. um, which is really exciting. Um, I feel like in the past 10 years, you know, with the internet, with shows like Critical Role, it's really opened the doors for a lot, a much more diverse group of people to play D&D, but historically, it's a boys game. Yeah. Yeah. And it really kind of falls into that stereotypical nerd archetype of certain kinds of people who play D&D. So I'm really excited and very honored to be part of a season where we, you know, step outside the boundaries of that and explore different perspectives in D&D. You don't really see very many live play shows like this where it is an all female or all, you know, women-led non-binary like cast. So it is really exciting and I think it really changes the nature of the table because we really yeah. treat it all like we're best friends. I mean, we spent so much time together being like, okay, so we're roommates at Fantasy College. <laughs> Wh who's in which room together? Uh -huh. Who's friends? Who does midnight snacks? Who does the blah, blah, blah? Building. So we do the world yeah. building together and it really yeah. feels very genuine and organic because we're able to share a much more genuine connection with each other. And it's very, it, it makes it makes D and D feel a little more elevated because we get to share that connection with each other. And yeah. so that's something that I really appreciate. That's and that's so, so fun and good on you guys for um, kind of being the change and creating diversity in, you know, in the show where you want to see I it. I also feel like it's just better representative of Emerson's population. Yes. Sure. I don't know if you guys have met, but there are a lot of people at Emerson who play D&D. <laughs> There's so many of us. And there are also so many queer people at Emerson. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's just a better representation of Emerson's student body to have different, you know, groups of people on the show. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah okay. touch on that. I can give statistics for the season. Uh, in my pitch, I straight up said, um, in the past two seasons, we've only had 18% um, of the cast identifying as women. Mm. And I was like, that is far too low of a number yeah. to yeah. have. And only 27% of the cast identified somewhere on like the women or non-binary spectrum. So I was like, we need to change this. Yeah, of course. Guys, we're changing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does, 
do either of you guys want? I feel like you already kind of like hit the mark where it was like <laughs> an all boys game and like like you said like most people only have their knowledge of D&D coming from shows like Stranger Things or other forms of media yeah. where mm -hmm. it's kind of it's seen as like you said like that kind of nerdy thing like the the, the boys are patronized in uh, Stranger, Stranger Things, things yeah. because they're nerds and they play D&D &D. but I feel like this is a great opportunity to show them a more realistic version of like what D&D &D is all about and how it could be like Mold it into kind of whatever you want it to be. Yeah, awesome. definitely. We have one last question too. If you want women, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure though. No pressure. Um, all right, so we're so excited to watch. Is there anything else that you can tease for us? Does everyone want to talk to? I don't know what I'm allowed to tease. Okay. Well, I know what I want to say. Oh, you go and tease okay. away. <laughs> we laugh a lot this season. <laughs> mostly we love to laugh. We love we, to laugh. We do love to laugh we, on this we show. We tell a lot of jokes, but it's mostly because our dice rolls, or at least my dice rolls, have been really bad. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Which, you know, the dice tell a story. So even when the dice rolls go poorly, something interesting always happens. Mm -hmm. But we laugh a lot because of that. Um, and I appreciate that we're able to share so many jokes. This yeah, time. we roll with the punches, one could say. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Well, that's all we have today for you on this morning. I'm Drew Mitchell. And I'm Katie Delaney. Thanks for waking up with us. Thank you. Thank you so much.